theorizing that primetime audiences were ready for a new time travel series, NBC and creator Donald Belisario debuted Quantum Leap on March 26, 1989. Starring Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell, the series followed Dr. Sam Beckett for five seasons of time-hopping adventures and vanished. Now, NBC Universal has resurrected the cult series for a new era. Starring Raymond Lee and Caitlin Bassett, the series once again follows a scientist as he leaps through history, making right what once went wrong. But just what is the show getting right and wrong? That's what we'll explore here on... Oh boy. Oh boy, it's a Quantum Leap podcast. My name is Nate, and with me is a co-host we can all see in here. It's Brian Martin. How are y'all doing? Here we are, episode two. Yeah, can you believe it? Two episodes in. We've got, we got two new episodes of Quantum Leap. I know, how about that? If if 13-year-old Brian could see me now, <laughs> he'd be like, yeah. the hell you watching? So uh, what was this episode about, Brian? March 7th, 1998. Ben Song has leaped into astronaut David Tamora, who's on the space shuttle Atlantis with a crew that are up there for, why were they up there? I don't know that I that I got that. But... I believe it was to start building the International Space Station, weren't they? The first oh, payload. Okay, yeah. I think it was the first payload to build the uh, International Space Station. Well, well, things as they tend to do on Quantum Leap went south real quickly for this crew. They suffered all sorts of damage. Just getting up to space, David Tamora, Ben Song, had to perform a spacewalk on which Ziggy predicted he would perish. And in true Quantum Leap form, not only does Ben manage to avoid certain death, in the process he makes things way worse and dooms the crew. Meanwhile, in the present of 2022, the rest of Team Quantum Leap are Quantum pursuing... Leap. Yeah, Janice Calavici to figure out what secrets she holds while the team splinters over whether or not to reveal to Ben the details surrounding his life before leaping. I um, thought it was a pretty solid episode, Nate. The general impressions. What were your impressions of this episode? Uh, yeah, uh, exponentially better on, on, on a lot of levels. I, I will say after letting it just state a little bit, I still had some issues with it and what have you, but uh, it much, much better watch, you know, mm -hmm. pretty exciting at times. And yeah, I, I was just uh, really impressed with the improvement. Yeah, we talked a little bit about this in the last episode that this show might have benefited from dropping like more than one episode out of the gate. Mm -hmm. And I think episode two kind of proved that point because... It quieted things down a bit. It, it, it was able to focus a little bit more. The action didn't feel so forced. I think it was True. reasonably suspenseful, but in a way that felt organic to the story. We didn't have to open with a car chase, which in hindsight, I'm like, okay, that was kind of cool. But but I also felt like we had a lot more time to connect with the characters in 1998 in the midst of the leap. And I think that having all the action take place in a, you know, it was kind of a bottle episode. <laughs> Everybody's on like a, a can up in space. There's only three other characters up there with Ben, not counting Addison. But it gives us a chance to really understand those characters a little bit more. And it was almost like, you know, all the, I don't want to call them grievances, but nitpicks we had for the first episode. I, I think I would call them grievances. You would call them grievances. <laughs> But I think they were uh, largely addressed uh, in the second episode, is just as far as the leap itself goes. Yeah, I I will agree with that up to a point. I feel like a lot of those things that we talked about, getting to know those characters in the leap, those things initially feel like they've been addressed. Letting it sink in a little bit, it, it still feels very superficial to me. And, you know, okay. and I'll, All right. I'll give you some examples, but I like, let me start with the good, though. I, I do feel like this was a quantum leap style conflict. This notion mm -hmm. that the shuttle was going to crash, the crew was going to be lost, 
and Ben needed to change something about what they did to avert catastrophe. Whereas episode one, just by comparison, felt like Ben against the bad guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And there's a yeah. there's a difference in quantum leap storytelling that's sort of like, here's a dangerous situation, here's where history went awry, and episode one just felt like, here are some bad guys doing some bad stuff, we need a hero to stop them. You know? Which isn't the same kind of conflict. So I felt... Yeah, it's a man versus nature conflict. Uh, I, th I think that yeah. Ben is fighting against the elemental forces, not just a, another being with, with a will of their own. Like, this is... It, it feels like a lot harder to dodge something that's naturally in, inclined to happen, right? Right, exactly. You, you, can't, you can't talk space debris out of smacking into you. Yeah, right. But you can do things differently to avoid an outcome. I mean, that's what the leaper is supposed to do. Live this life differently. Do something that might affect somebody else or the person they inhabit so that things change, you know? Not yeah. avoid dying in the jewel heist. Just, <laughs> you know? Well, like, why don't we just stay home, guys? Yeah, it doesn't... <laughs> I don't know. It just... In seeing the comparison next to each other, that first episode just doesn't ring true like uh, like what I understand Quantum Leap to be. It, it felt like it was trying too hard. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it felt very uh, written, <laughs> if, that makes, yes. if that makes any <laughs> sense at all. It felt very yeah. written. It never feels like in that first episode he gets himself into a corner that he can't get himself out of. And there are a couple moments in the second episode where, you know, you're able to, I think, sort of extend that disbelief and and believe that, OK, this seems a little bit dicey, uh, even though we know that Ben will survive, even though we can rest relatively assured that he is going to correct whatever went wrong in the past. Although, hey, I, I challenge the writers of Quantum Leap to just fuck that shit up <laughs> on one of these leaps. <laughs> but th again, it's like. From the uh, spacewalk, the first spacewalk to the second space leap, there are moments in here that feel like there's actual peril involved. Yes. Right? Yeah. There's a danger there that you never really felt. And I think it has to do with that uh, bottle episode aspect of it, because as you were describing it that way, you know, they are in a very confined space since it's really only half the episode because the rest of the time is spent in 2022 with team quantum leap as you called them uh, yeah um <laughs> but uh, i guess we could split them up there's like team addison and team magic yeah in this episode um yeah but for the time traveling aspect with ben in the shuttle having it in that confined space i think juxtaposed to running around the city with the jewel heist and interacting with different characters and different people, it made me realize Quantum Leap is kind of a small show. And I'm speaking about mm -hmm. this one and the original. It's a, it's a smaller yeah. show. You know what I mean? It's not very sprawling. No, even, even the ones that seem kind of grander in scope, like Trilogy or something from the original sure. series, okay. are so insular and quiet. And, and that's kind of, to me, that's kind of the beauty of the show. Is like, it's about those tiny, small human moments, right? And I hope that this show, this reboot, avoids this sort of sprawling narrative. And it's kind of teetering back and forth right now. Yeah, two um, episodes I, in. I don't know where the where the mystery is headed, right? right. But, um, but I don't want them to lose sight of that. This episode gave me a little bit of hope that at least within the context of the leaps themselves, uh, we won't lose sight of that. So which, which story is more interesting? You've got two stories going on here. You've got your leap, right? And then you've got your mystery that we that we talked so much about last week. Yeah. What's the more interesting narrative? I will tell you that I want it to be the leaps. But, I mean, and I feel like we, we got to talk about this, like, early. Because it was the moment where I was like, oh, shit. And you probably felt the same way, too. Beth. Yeah. You dropped Beth into the episode. That was the original actress who played I know Beth it was, in yeah. Quantum Leap. I made a note of that. Uh, it's her, I was, Susan Dial. 
I'm Susan Deal. Deal? Yeah, like like D I O L. Yeah, yeah. Deal or Dial or, or, but it was it was better. And she was, was recognizable like, oh too, God. like immediately recognizable. Yeah. Yes, I was like, ah, God, you sons of bitches. Yeah. Good for that's you. That's like that's like quantum leap catnip <laughs> for me. You know, it's like of course I'm invested now. You're throwing all these things at me. You got magic in episode one. Mm-hmm. Beth showing up in episode two. I never expected that, man. Yeah. Like I don't I don't know why we didn't, but you're right. I it's mean, a no brainer. It's it's a no brainer. Right. Exactly. She looks great. Exactly. So uh, good for her. Yeah. Again, kind of like we talked about last time, where we are seeing to one degree or another the effects of sam's final leap yes in this show janice calavici exists beth was al's wife all the way to the end of his life right yes. and we're seeing evidence of that every week and i'll be damned if that isn't scratching some nostalgic itches there you know what i mean like sure uh, uh, you, it doesn't matter how interesting this is when you keep tossing that shit at me. yeah yeah it's true it's true it gives you things to think about because if you remember we discussed uh, a little bit last week the episode where uh, the the entire courtroom changes around Al and he's cognizant mm-hmm. of the time shift. It makes you wonder whether did he just come home one day and be like, "Hey, it's Beth." Yeah, like I mean, I, I, like uh, honestly, Tina, I'll they call never, you back. They don't ever have time to address that, you know. Mm-hmm. When that finale initially happened, as said, well, I guess he never joined Quantum Leap, you know. Like the the entire trajectory of his life would have changed. You know, right? And yet, yet he clearly did. History didn't change that much, and I feel like it's the wrong time to get into um the the more spiritual side of quantum. Yeah, which is which I agree. Which would predicate some for, sort of destiny, like Al and Sam had to be together in that original series. Right, right. Um, I feel like at some point during this season of new quantum leap we will have a chance to really kind of dig into the uh sort of spiritual ramifications of the original series at least i hope we do because that was such a huge part of it yeah and it'll be interesting to see if they go you know how much of that they delve into with the new series right yeah i'll be honest i'll be surprised if they really go heavy into it like the original series did but yeah we'll see i i i I agree i don't think they will i mean i the old series had the the benefit of having like Highway to Heaven still on the air. <laughs> right. Right. And this was definitely Quantum Leap was definitely a baby of Highway to Heaven. Right. Exactly. You know, it was it was very much the same sort of which which itself was sort of a baby of shows like The Fugitive or The Incredible like Hulk. Loner, you know. Uh, the Incredible Hulk is another one. Yeah. Like that was just this that, that kung fu. It's like a like a loner wandering the earth. Right. And Donald Belisario's like, "Well, what if we make him a time traveler?" And that was like the only conceit that was kind of new for the concept. Everything else was kind of like, this is a, this is a pretty common sort of trope yeah. in the 80s and 70s, right? I didn't actually watch Highway to Heaven, but he was an angel, isn't that right? He was an angel, yeah. He was trying to earn his, uh, I guess he was trying to earn his wings like Clarence. Right, you know, so in, the, uh, yeah, so there's some there's some conjecture then that, that uh, Sam might have been an angel, you know, when you think, uh, again, we, yeah. we didn't want to get too deep into that but um he didn't survive the accelerator folks that's what we're (laughs) we're gonna toss that out there that's canon now yeah but uh yeah it it did it did have a very spiritual feel and i i agree with you i don't think that they're gonna really touch on that with the uh with the reboot here but um maybe i'll be surprised i did joke last time that like the interior of quantum leap headquarters looked a lot like ctu from 24 yes and i'll be damned if this week's episode in 2022 wasn't just an episode of 24 like right like the the faction splintering off there was an explosion in a basement at one point you know like they had to open sockets and and steal hard drives and plug in shit like it had a very 24 feel to it yeah that's kind of where i was getting at with what's the more interesting story i don't know if i really got an answer from you so i think that the 20 22 story is more interesting to me right now really and 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 again i want it to be the leaps like i want the focus of the show to be on the small stories right i don't want it to get lost in this just morass of mystery really um even though that's clearly like a huge huge part of the show but i also i cannot stress this enough i really really love mason alexander park 
just in general. But as Ian, they are the most compelling part of the 2022 narrative to me. Definitely the most interesting character on that side. Well, I was going to say the most interesting, except that I really want to see what they do with magic. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, of course. More interested in knowing what they end up doing with magic. But currently, yes, I I agree. Um, It's interesting to hear you say that that you're more invested in the mystery at this point. Because while I was watching last week, I just wanted them to get back to the space shuttle. The very fact that it felt like a 24 episode. All of those characters feel like written characters. Yes. They've, you know, yeah. it's 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 so structured in a way that you've seen before. There's something very familiar and procedural yes, about and, it. And a familiar procedure even. Because you go to the you go to the mom and this in this case Beth, you know, it's great to see her, but you know, oh okay, the investigator goes to the parents so that the parent will call the daughter and then they'll be able to track the daughter and find out where the daughter is. Then they go to the daughter's house and they've got a secret basement that we notice because a carpet has moved. And we go down the track, and there's, oh, here's all this stuff. And then they get the call from the kidnapper, <laughs> you know, in most cases. It's like a, a kidnapper <laughs> or the bad guy or says that was one step ahead. Like, I know you're yep. in my house, but you didn't know I was prepared for you to be in my house. I was just like... It just smokes the whole server. Like, I mean... and. That seemed like a lot of money to just throw down the toilet, it, but I, I guess I don't know much about time travel. <laughs> I don't know. It just felt to me. It just felt so cookie cutter. It does feel and very uh, not rote. yes to the point of. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't interesting to me at all. I guess I'm just I'm I, I'm invested in in how beautiful everyone looks. I guess that's part <laughs> of it for me. Like even Ernie Hudson, I cannot believe how good Ernie Hudson looks. He's a good looking man. For his age, like the guy looks like he he just walked off the set of goddamn Ghostbusters. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, although he did, right? It just came out a little while ago. Oh, well, I guess that's <laughs> true. Like he did just walk off the set of a Ghostbusters. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I I completely completely understand. I'm just, I guess I'm like a real sucker for what they're doing, and like I am definitely like you know how sometimes you're fishing and you throw. Uh, baited a fish and it takes the hook and you let it loose and then you catch the same damn fish again <laughs> with the same bait like five minutes later i am that fish <laughs> on this show like you throw me magic i'm in you throw me the name calavici i'm in you throw me beth i'm in yeah who knows what we'll get next week but so far it's been so anecdotal and like i, I felt like when janice was on the phone talking to magic while magic was in their basement you know like i've got a fail safe get out of the house now <laughs> while you can't right. and i was just like it's like CPI security. Yeah, and and I just said, you know what? She's too evil to be evil. So in the phone call, I could tell, like, okay, this is all just some setup for what will ultimately be a misunderstanding. You know? Yes. She's clearly and, and again, not like... evil the way she's delivering this, the way that it's written. She's not a bad guy. And in that whole B plot, they also really flirt with the idea that maybe Ben is evil. Right. Right. Which I thought, oh, my God, kind of like we were talking last week about, like, what if someone leaped into Ben? Right. And, like, set this whole thing in motion. And, like, that's Ben being evil seems like an idea that's way too good for this show to commit to. Yeah. Right. Like, if, if that was the big twist was that he was up to no good. That would be great. And people love a redemption story, right? So what if this whole leaping process is like a redemption arc for for this character we discover was evil from the outset, right? Now, I don't think that's true. I don't think the show's going to go that way. Right. Within the context of these sort of like rote cookie cutter moments, I'm like, oh man, there's a kernel of a good idea there. And speaking of the comment I made last week about what if someone leaped into him, there was a moment where magic says to Jen, the security head, are you sure Ben didn't leap into you when she's making comments <laughs> about like, you know, working together with the team or something? Yeah. And uh, I was like, stop teasing me with a good time show. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is kind of funny. I made a note of this. You know, he goes to talk to, to Beth, the security card, security head. What's her name? Does she have a name? Jen. Or... What is yeah, it? her name's Jen. Jen. OK, so Jen goes to magic and she's like your ploy worked she called janice and it turns right. out 
it turns out she just has a house in suburbia. <laughs> you know, like could have right. could have used the for, phone for book. Secret lair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you couldn't find this woman. You you work for yeah, the Yeah, I mean, because you know that wasn't an Airbnb. Like <laughs> like she had done way too much to that basement. Yeah, it's just it's just her house. Like they just go to her house. She had to be listed, right? I mean, right? No, yeah. What? And and she doesn't seem again. She doesn't seem like nefarious enough to be going by like a, an assumed name or something. It's just like well, see, I think they want Janice us to Calavici. think she just is. Google Janice Calavici. Yeah, exactly. Right. No, yeah, that's my point. But I think they do want us to believe that she's nefarious. I think they want us to believe that she's a bad guy. She delivered every line on the telephone call like she was the bad guy being a step ahead of the cops. And it's just not going to, I just can tell it's not going to be that, you know? Oh, here's a thought. Here's a thought. Yeah. Okay. And this just occurred to me. What if she is trying to get Ben to travel back to the day that Sam told Beth that Al was still alive to change that history? So she was never born <laughs> because she's super depressed. <laughs> You'll end up with like a flash Professor Zoom moment where like there's like 15 time travelers all converging on one spot trying to tell Beth not to marry some other schlub. <laughs> I tell you, that's definitely a long game for uh, suicide. <laughs> um, but like I was like I was saying early on that the shuttle stuff did feel like a quantum leap episode. The thing that kind of brought a smile to my face was the glimmer of enjoyment that Ben had about being in space and being. Yeah. Yeah. He was so tickled by it. And I felt like that was the first time we've actually seen Ben as his natural self. Yeah, right? as a like, person. like the first episode gave you no breathing room whatsoever. And, and I think this, and, and, and that goes for Addison as well. And the two of them together, yeah. I think it gave them individually and together more of a moment to kind of show who they are. I really didn't like Addison very much after the pilot. And there's a moment in the second episode where she's just kind of sitting there looking out at space mm -hmm. and marveling like, this is incredible. Like, I know it's a hologram. I know it's not real, but this is amazing. Yeah. To be up here. And and just the, the image of him in his spacesuit on the spacewalk and her just sitting there completely without just in her normal street clothes sitting there. I was like, this was what I was missing in that first episode. Remember I talked about how not out of place Addison looked in just her yes. normal clothes running around 1985. Yes. Like that image. I was like, this is what that first episode lacked. Like Addison is not here. Her being is not in this environment right now. And right. I needed that sort of like visual juxtaposition to really sell me on it and make me sort of, ah, yes, this is quantum leap. She is a hologram. Created by a subatomic agitation of carbon quarks tuned to the mesons of my optic and optic neurons? Yeah. Um, and it did so much more for me, that visual, than any, like, person walking through her in the first episode or a car passing through her or anything. Right. Um, I, I really love that moment. And it, it played better with somebody in the room having the conversation, uh, you know? Yeah. Ha Having, trying to have a conversation with Addison while somebody else was in the room, you know? I love that. I want this to be his thing. Like, you know, Sam's thing is always, oh boy. And then the episode starts. I want Ben's thing to be, where's the bathroom? And every <laughs> week it's like, like the very first thing is he has to find a bathroom and talk to Addison. Because it's we're two for two so far. That's true. Like, Straight to find the, the bathroom. Yep. Yeah, where's your where's your where's your shitter? That's yeah. what I wanted to <laughs> say is, every single week. What does leaping do to your bowels? Yeah, <laughs> um, you just release them immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got another question for you. Why isn't Ben the next Einstein? I I pull that quote straight from uh, the original series. They Time Magazine was calling uh, Sam Beckett the next Einstein, right? And right. we've got a protagonist in that show that knows seven languages, six doctorates, three martial arts, grew up on a farm. Basically, anything that you can know, he knows somehow. He was like a he was like a proto neo, but he worked for it. God damn it! I feel like maybe that character Ben people wouldn't buy that today. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I also think that Ben is a little more unwitting than Sam was. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever compelled him to step into the accelerator, he wasn't like 
top dog of the project. The went the little caca. A little caca? Because he, he wasn't, again, like Addison That's was going to be the leaper, right? Yeah. Um, And I feel like. And it was Sam's baby. So Yeah, there's a yeah, little, yeah. something to him like, he's, yes, is he intelligent? Yes. Does he know multiple languages? Yes, obviously. But there, there's even more of a sense of fish out of water. I think with Ben, uh, than, than you got with Sam, where Sam was a fish out of water specifically because yeah, the bouncing around through time, the Swiss cheese brain, that's really what did it. But Ben seems like in addition to those two things, he's not necessarily top of his field, I guess. He, he's just a very intelligent dude who was working on the project. The went the little caca. Right. Because they talk about him writing, writing code for Ziggy, but isn't that just, isn't that kind of what Ian, is Ian does for. that too, right? Like, yeah, anybody can write code for Ziggy, yeah. obviously. Right? Yeah, I I don't know. It just seemed interesting to me that he, yeah, he is just kind of an every man, you know. Yeah. And whereas uh, Sam was this exceptional, like impossible person, <laughs> always finding out more and more. In fact, one of my favorite moments, one of my favorite Sam's just breadth of work in like the quote unquote real world of quantum leap uh, was in the, the honeymoon express episode. Mm -hmm. We talked about the original it. series. Yeah. We, we talked about it in the last episode. He's talking with his uh, <clears throat> new wife in the leap. Right. And he tries to explain to her that, cause he's really conflicted about like sealing the deal on their wedding night when he's not her actual husband. And, and he tries to explain to her that his name is actually Sam Beckett. She says the playwright. And, he's and he says, <laughs> I don't think so. That's one of my favorite right? lines. Yeah. Like, it's so great. Because it's like, I, frankly, given everything I know about myself at this point, who the hell knows? Yeah. Maybe I did write yeah. plays, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, it's such a such a great little moment. It um, is. That's a great line. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love it. Um, so, um so, so one of the one of the big hangups I had with the first episode, and I talked about this a little bit, is that I didn't really buy the relationship between Addison and Ben. Right. At least as it existed in that first episode. Right. I feel a little bit better about it this week. What What are your thoughts about? No, it? I, I I agree. I was kind of bring that up when you were mentioning, um, you know, their interactions and and her being out in space, and you get to see a little different side of her. Um, and when she wanted him to continue remembering, you know, have his memory come back, you could, it, it did feel like there was a better connection there, but I'm on the side of Ben, right? As the two teams yeah. in Team Quantum Leap, which now that that's coined, I'm, I don't know that I'm happy about that. <laughs> I don't think I want a Team no. Quantum Leap, it's like a CW show or something. But uh, I would have liked a Team Quantum Leap spinoff from the original series that was about Gushi and Tina. That's right. And Verbena Beaks. Yeah, and maybe. Those people. That would have been good. Uh, but point being, uh, as those teams kind of split off and she felt that Magic and Jen were not giving Ben the benefit of the doubt and she was prepared to do that, uh, I think that kind of sells it a little better. You know, I'm mm -hmm. on the side of this person. And I will trust that this person is honest with me, you know? And yeah. so, yeah. So, yeah, I think that might have something to do with it. Um, but yeah, the, the connection between the two of them feels, it feels better. Uh, I like, like I said, I was much more invested in the shuttle side of the episode. And it has to do, I think, with getting to know the characters that the Leaper is involved with, right? And yes they pay more attention to you're getting to know the crew of this shuttle, you know, care about mm -hmm. their lives and, and things of that nature. Right. And when I turned off the episode, I said, well, you know what, man, that was quantum leap. At least, you know, we, we had these people that we cared about and he was there to save her. And then uh, I went to sleep on it, woke up, thought about it a little bit. And it's, it's just a lot of tricky writing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, you know, I I did think like as far as like the the, the sort of characters in the uh, in the nineteen ninety eight portion of the story. How many times did Sam Beckett's leaps focus around like a 
like stuck in his ways kind of older guy who was like controlling his daughter or his son mm-hmm. or the family business, you know, like the the stuntman episode and yeah. Um hell, even Sam's leap back into his own childhood and dealing with his stubborn dad, right? Like like so many episodes of Quantum Leap deal with a sort of paternal figure who's just gruff and stuck in his ways. And this episode taps into that with that uh right. astronaut guy who's not Carly Pope's dad, but like obviously her mentor or something, and um has sort of shepherded her through the astronaut program. And it does lead to this sort of however earned it is or not, this nice moment where, you know, Ben's able to say, she's the best because you trained her to be that way, right? Yeah. Um, and that that little speech felt very Beckett-esque, right? Like, mm-hmm. it felt like a Sam Beckett speech. Um, it does also feed to both parts of the episode, meaning the troubles that Team Quantum Leap are having about being yep. split and divisive, you know, and he's the glue that kind of held them together or whatever, because he has these, the talent of these types of speeches <laughs> to, you know what it's like. to keep people together. So Addison can listen to him in his context and apply it to their troubles back in 2022 or her personal feelings, you know? So I, I yeah. see where they're trying it's... to, they're trying to bridge those two things, which is nice. I just felt like at the end of the day, all of those characters in the shuttle are kind of one note trope characters. And what they've done mm-hmm. here is constructed this told you quote unquote narrative or my, my whole career. He said, told you, told you, you know, and he says that at the mm-hmm. beginning. Hey, you're up here. I told you, you know, right. But it's not a real connection. Yeah. It's a written connection that says Here's yes. a here's a through line since we're only going to have these people for 15 20 minutes screen time or whatever. We need some kind of through line that makes it appear as though these people have real relationships and one specific thing that we can point to that will tie these two people together. And you've based this entire relationship of Samantha Stratton and the commander over this notion that he's always said told you and you have that to hold on to. And again, this is, I got wrapped up into it when I was watching it, but after the fact, I, I felt like in a longer episode that had more to do with them, you you cut out the, you know, cookie cutter mystery side of it, you know, just cut that out all, all together, spend the, the entire hour in that shuttle, and you can show that instead of yes. telling us that, right? And I thought about That's it. That's absolutely true. And I thought about it in terms of, the original series again and i'm just as far as as far as gatekeepers i think we've discovered that i'm the gatekeeper <laughs> so i will this will always be compared i will always yeah. compare this to the but i feel like if it were sam he would have found that out you know he would have mm-hmm. found out what their relationship was by getting to know both of them yes and yeah. ben only has enough time to have been told by sam uh, samantha that this is my relationship with this man that's now unconscious. I have this relationship with this person, and I am telling it to you right here, so that that's information. Yeah, they only have two. I think they only have two scenes together. Ben and Sam, uh, Samantha, only have like that that first scene, and then the one where she's like, "Oh, we're we're going to the we're going to Mir," you know? Yeah. Um, and and that's pretty much it. So, yeah, I th- I think they are sort of doing a disservice um, to that A plot. I'm still going to call it that, even though it's kind of unclear right now if that is, in fact, our A plot or if it's just a yeah, every, that's the, every leap is a B plot. And that's the problem. Um, I think that's the real yeah. problem. But I think you hit on something else where you said, like, you know, they, they create this sort of narrative structure that defines both time periods, right? Like, this episode, it's Ben is the glue that holds everything together, right? He holds the crew together. He holds the project together in the future. And the way it feels executed right now is kind of like this, like a juvenile essay that begins with like, this is my essay about Quantum Leap. In this essay, I am going to demonstrate X, Y, and Z, right? And then each topic paragraph is like X, Y, Z, and then it clues with, that's my essay. That is a, Thanks for reading. Th- you know, it's like one of those extraordinarily juvenile kind of kind of constructions where it's like, 
okay, you put it together, but there's a distinct lack of character and sincerity right now, it's, right? Yes. And and if we could just yes. pull it pull it in and make it more about the lead and, and discovering, like you say, discovering who these characters are on a little bit deeper level, it'll it'll improve things. Uh, just from a dramatic standpoint. Again, I think this episode did a lot better than the first episode. No, I yeah, know, and right. and of course, yeah. It, it, at the end of the day, yeah, it's it's exponentially better. But again, like here's where I I I think. I don't think it's entirely my fault that I'm comparing because like I said last week, I, I watch on the streamer. So I saw episode two, part two of Genesis following <laughs> this. Uh, so I'm wa I'm watching hand in hand, you know, like episode by episode. You're doing what they're asking you to do. It makes sense. It's, and I'll tell you what, if I wasn't, I would have missed something pretty big. And by the fact that you haven't brought it up yet, makes me think that maybe you missed it. So... Uh, yeah. So Samantha Stratton, she's kind of the lead in that B plot, right? Or that A plot or sure. whatever. Plot, right. The command, I really want to call it the B plot. We're going to call it the B plot. <laughs> OK. In the B plot, we get to know Samantha Stratton. She's the main character. OK. Here's your twist. Going back to Genesis of uh, season one, the, the character that Sam leaps into is Tom Stratton. Oh shit! No, I didn't. And I didn't make that. Connection. Remember, he was supposed to fly Mach three and survive, and then leap. Uh -huh. But it wasn't the flying. Go back and watch this episode, people. It's not the flying past Mach three that gets him to leap. It's his wife goes into premature labor, and Sam, being the medical doctor that he is, is able to stop the labor. Uh, because she wasn't far enough. He's able to shove that baby yeah, right basically. on back yeah, yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah. Let she it finish far, cooking. Far enough along, so he saved Tom Stratton's daughter, Samantha. Damn. And that was his. All right. That was that was his first leap. So you want to talk about pulling from the source material, and that knocked me off my feet. But um, it made me think a little bit. You know, they they unlocked the server. Right. right. Calavici's um, uh, hard drive. And it throws up the map of the point in time they're trying to reach. Correct. Right. So it's, it kind of reminds me of the map to Luke Skywalker, you know, it kind of Skywalker. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> it kind of exactly, blows yeah. up and it's got the little blinky light right in the middle where they're trying to get. <laughs> but it, it occurred to me, like, what if Ben is following the trajectory of Sam? So his leaps are just behind him. You know, so that there's a path there, maybe, right? So if it's a, if it's a map of dates and times within space time, perhaps Ben has mapped out the direction he needs to go to intercept, and maybe that's what they they're trying to do. And if so, you know, there could be seeds. I haven't seen episode three yet, but uh, you know, I'm gonna watch them together, see if so they have any connective episode tissue. Episode three, original series, episode three was he was a college professor yes and donna was in it like sam's at the time uh ex-fiance right played by terry hatcher in that episode right right so maybe in the next episode we'll get uh get terry hatcher i don't know probably not because she was donna was played by somebody else later on in the series right in the leap home or the leap back and leap back yeah the leap back yeah but hey, who knows maybe maybe donna's got to be out there somewhere right yeah Presumably off uh, off camera, you and I have talked about how I feel about that. The like, <laughs> like he just leaves her. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna leave this in the podcast. I'm gonna edit this part out. But <laughs> there's something pretty dirt baggy about it. Is. It is. It's like um, holy but, shit. But dude. again, like like so, Al and Beth get together. Sam and Donna get together throughout the course of the leaps, but. Sam and Al are still in the project doing what they do. Is it destiny? Is it fate? Are yeah. they intertwined? You know, like, does it have to happen? You know, I don't know. There's, there's all sorts of questions there. Yeah. And, and maybe this show, I, I I mean, like, that legitimately blew my mind. The Stratton thing, I was like, I did not make that connection at all. So well, and who would, unless you were watching them back to cool. back? Like, we're... Right, I mean, yeah, like, I remember the characters. I don't remember every... Right. character's name like you have to be a psycho to <laughs> what is whatever like ziggy wiki or whatever it's called exactly probably recognized it but like wow yeah you and i are big enough quantum leap fans that if anybody was going to pick up on that you would have thought it would be one of us 
you know they sure don't draw attention to it right no and they very tasteful very tasteful yeah you don't want that stuff shoved down your throat you know exactly so it was yeah it was a delight to discover that how cool and maybe they'll do that. Maybe maybe like this week's episode or the next episode won't be won't include a reference to episode three of the original series, but maybe it will include a reference to some. Yeah. Because I mean Sam's been a boxer before. Yes. And the next episode clearly involves Ben getting the shit knocked out of him. Yeah. So uh yeah, yeah. kind of there for that. One other thing I really wanted to this is the biggest disappointment I had in the whole episode. Okay. Yeah. Follow um, up my enjoyment with your disappointment then. When the when the, when the space shuttle gets to space and uh, the commander puts on "Fly Me to the Moon," Frank Sinatra, mm-hmm. Sinatra died in '98, right around the same time. So it's kind of nice, but I mean, like, if you were really trying to sell us on the time period, it should have been like uh, Smash Mouth walking on the sun, <laughs> like get up to space, and it's like. <laughs> I would have loved that. Oh. I would have loved that. Like, this is the stupidest fucking song you could play. I mean... It's like you waited your whole life to get to space, and it's like... Might as well be walking on the sun. Might as well be walking on the sun. Yeah, but then you'd have to believe that that guy would put that song on. <laughs> Love Smash Mouth. <laughs> I forget the, com- be- the commander's name, but he's a huge Smash Mouth fan. <laughs> That's character building, man. That's that's how you're like that's how you make a multifaceted character in five minutes of screen time. You're like, this guy's really interesting. So he's an old dude that really loves Smash Mouth, huh? Yep, yep. And he said told you a lot. <laughs> put he put on they could they could do the sugar ray. <laughs> they put on that fly song. Yep. Uh Savage Garden. There's so many space related songs they could have thrown on in nineteen ninety eight, but <laughs> sure he loves Sinatra like every other old guy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it is It is really interesting watching those episodes back to back. I don't know if I advise it or not, because I may have been more apt to buy that whole B plot and, oh, wow, they really did it this time. If I hadn't immediately followed it up with Genesis Part 2, where yeah. all of those characters are so rich and connected and you really felt like Sam loved Peg. It was Peg Stratton. Yeah, and how much how much more time do you get with those characters? You get like an hour and oh, 10 or 20 yeah. minutes with those characters overall, right? Yeah, like, yeah. So it's... Yeah, it's, by comparison, so it, it's yeah. they're, they're doing what they need to do in the reboot. Try and draw a connection, make you care about these people. Give the viewer something they know about that relationship between those two characters, uh, being Samantha Stratton and her commander, whose name escapes me. In lieu of having the time to actually make you care about them, you have to give them something like, I know about this aspect of their relationship, so I know these people. But do you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. uh, they, you know, they're doing what they what they needed to do. And and it felt like uh, it felt like Quantum Leap, you know, at least half of it did. And um, <laughs> half of it felt like Quantum Leap. Half of it felt like 24. I think you're going to have to stick up for that other side of the show. It's, did, we'll see. did next to nothing for me. We'll see. If Donna shows up, if, if Gushy shows up in the next episode, I'm, I'm all in. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I'll, I'll never, I'll never be walked at, talked down from that. Aside from the, aside from the Beth thing, it was really nice to see Beth. And but, I saw her and I was like, y'all didn't have to do this. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, definitely, definitely cookie cutter. Yeah. I will not disagree with that at all. But, uh, but we'll see, you know, next week, episode three. You said we had a full season to go through, right? They got a they got I, a full I'm pretty sure this thing has gotten gotten a full season. Now the internet movie database would imply that there's only four episodes, but I know that's not true. This this got a full season order. Like they got like it got ordered to series really quick when they saw the pilot, which is remarkable. But maybe they, like uh Janice Calavici, know more than we do about it at this point. So uh Yeah. We'll, I've got we'll, some we'll keep watching. Yeah, I I've got some thoughts on that as well that I think we probably should probably should save till episode three. Um, let's, let's, let's see if they pan out. First. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm... There's not a whole lot to go on as far as Janice goes this week. Although I did think it was funny that when she called them, she was in Ben and, uh, and Addison's apartment, like that was torn up. I know. So, uh, I mean, it's, that's, this is what I'm talking about. Like if she's so nefarious, she's even yeah. trespassing while she's on the phone, you know? And we know that Al's daughter is not going to be a bad guy. Right? 
I don't know. I don't, what kind of dad do you think he was? Well, I, I'm not saying that she couldn't be. I'm not even saying that she shouldn't be. This, this show would not let her be. Exactly. Now, this show was on, I don't know, HBO. They'd all be evil. Yeah, HBO, FX, somebody that's willing to take a oh, risk. Man, if- you know, if it was on us, if it was on effects, they'd all be evil and have have like sleeve tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. All right, just... man. Do you have anything else for this uh, this episode? No, I think I'm tapped out now. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see what happens next time. Yeah, I'm going to keep watching. Uh, going to keep watching. I'm going to keep watching the old one along with it. I really hope that that theory holds true. That theory. I like this idea that that he's following Sam's path yeah. through time in the hopes of eventually reaching the same endpoint. That's my theory as to what their plan was. I like that theory. Yeah. That or Lothos. I do like that theory. Either that or Lothos, the evil leapers. Something like this. I, which I also love that theory. Like, just, <laughs> oh just ham it up. Um, Wait, are you an evil leaper fan? I, you know, when I was like 12, I was really into it. And like, but I mean, I was like, again, a mark for that sort of shit. Like, like the best thing in the world to a kid in like 1992 was the, the idea of the evil twin, right? Yeah. This is, this is right around the time, like, like the biggest thing in comic books was Cable and Stripe, right? <laughs> like, like I was, I was a total mark for this shit back in like 1992. So, uh. So yeah, like looking back at it now, I'm like, boy, that stuff's kind of stupid. And there were a lot of episodes, especially in season five of Quantum Leap, that were like, yeah, we're just pulling out all the stuff. Like... In fact, this this one, um, I remember seeing an article about, and this is really just a total reminiscence here on the original series. But before it got canceled, there was an episode that was in the planning stages where Sam, get this, leaped into a cartoon character. What? Don't even ask me how that was supposed to work. I imagine in my head, I always wanted it to be something like Duck Amuck, where like Sam was a cartoon character beset by an insane animator. Yeah. Like Chuck Jones and, Daff- and Daffy Duck. Well, like that would have been that, that would have been like next level, but it also would have been like just absolute jumping the shark, right? <laughs> like you think Quantum Leap jumped the shark with Lee Harvey Oswald or Elvis. Or any of the, at the time he was a fucking vampire. No. <laughs> this is jumping the shark. Sam is a cartoon character. I don't know. I kind of want to see that now. <laughs> I want to know how they how they planned to do that. I may have to may have to look into that a little bit. I only ever saw a blurb about it in like a trade magazine at the time. Like may have might have been Entertainment Weekly or might have even been like Wizard or something. Like like there was a little blurb about upcoming episodes of Quantum Leap, and then it was like abruptly canceled at the end of season five, so that we never saw yeah that episode yeah Um, yeah. Well, what do we got? You know, people aren't watching. We need to steer away from all this stuff that you and I love so much and have been droning on about with the original series. I, uh, right, right. The know. human the human connection. Let's just put some evil leapers in there and their leap effect is red. <laughs> I said that first that first evil leaper episode, if you don't know it's coming and the moment Aaliyah appears and morphs and and Sam is like who are you and she's like who are you? It's like yeah. Again, that's straight up quantum leap cat yeah. You're like, I defy you not to come back from this commercial break, man. You want to see what happens next. Yeah. You know, that's got to be up there as far as like commercial break cliffhangers go for that show. It is true. In watching the the original as as I'm going here, I, I am realizing it's been a while since I did my watch through of this show. You know, there are there are other shows yeah. that I'm I've gone back to more recently than Quantum Leap. Sure. So going through these episodes, watching them again, it's a good journey. It's a good journey. I I, I I like it. And um I don't feel too bad about it because the podcast that we're doing here doesn't specifically say that it's supposed to be about the reboot. It's just a quantum leap podcast. Yeah, it just right? be a general yeah. yeah, we'll talk about the comic books. I have a bunch of the novels too, you know. Like oh, you're gonna they, make they me read on this thing? Maybe. I don't know. Those novels them. are pretty quick reads. I don't know if I had to read a book. <laughs> there was one about a Ren Fair, and I think that was the last one I read. I was like, I don't need any more of these. Well, I'll tell you what, if we if we if we have enough content to keep going, yeah, let's touch on the comics. Let's touch on the books. Let's, you know, whatever whatever else is out there. And uh, yeah. in the meantime, we'll keep following Ben's song, see what he's up to. See what other characters and connections we can pick up. 
week to week. See now? So, just to wrap things up, guys, if you want to engage with us, interact with us, talk to us, you can find us while you're leaping through cyberspace. You can find me on Twitter at Captain Burn. That's C-A-P-T-N-B-E-R-N. Nate, where can people find you? At Action Nate, A-C-T-I-O-N-N-A-T-E. See, that's way easier than mine. Be sure to check out the Paprika feed for movie reviews, pop culture drafts. I've done quite a few of those myself. And countless hours, hours, I say, of entertainment. Until next week, I'm Brian. I'm Nate. And we'll be here in the waiting room. <laughs>